all of us are familiar with the term stress. Some of us experience it more, while others are affected a little bit less by it. I feel like stress usually impacts more ambitious people in life. Like if you want to achieve more, you're probably gonna face more anxiety in your life. Throughout my entire life, I had the deep level of stress kind of crawling inside of me. And then when I moved to US to play college basketball and I was also trying to be a perfect student, satisfied everyone, that stress level was kind of peaking and I decided that I don't want stress to be such a huge part of my life anymore. And you know, it wasn't like I snapped my fingers and all of a sudden I don't have stress anymore. It was a long journey that I did, well, maybe not that long, but it was a journey. And here's three things that helped me the most during this journey that I want to share with you. And before we start, I just want to add that I'm not a doctor in any way and I understand, I fully understand that there's different case levels and you know, some of that is mental disorders. So those methods might not apply for anyone. I'm just telling the stuff that worked for me so you can apply it or you cannot apply it. Without further ado, let's jump to the video. First and foremost, one of the biggest things that helped me to battle stress in my life is that I stopped caring about what other people think or have to say. Look, a huge source of stress is coming from the fear of not being accepted by the society. And you know, unfortunately or fortunately, that's gonna happen if you want to be different, if you want to take that non-conventional path and not follow all the rules of the society. And I'm not saying that you need to become a jack to start filming some stupid pranks, but if you just want to take non-conventional path and you know, not work from 9 to 5 or whatever else, the society gonna look different at you because you are not the majority, you are a minority now. And when I'm saying that I stop caring about what other people think or have to say to me, it's not that I'm a jerk. It's simply learning how to separate constructive criticism that actually can be helpful for you from just someone else's opinion that has nothing to do with what you're doing. When I was playing basketball and I had my coach yelling at me and trying to explain something, I would better listen to him because he's doing that for a longer time than I'm doing, he has more knowledge and experience accumulated, so actually if I listen to him, I'm probably gonna become better. Like, that's a constructive criticism. But constructive criticism still has the word criticism in it. And, you know, sometimes when my coach was yelling at me, it was hard to receive that information because, you know, he's yelling, I'm angry because I did a mistake, etc. But that's the time when it's extremely important to put your feelings to the side, maybe, and try to filter the information from the tonality of delivery. But then, besides of the constructive criticism, there's that second thing that I told you about, and it's someone else's opinion that you never asked for. For example, I'm filming a YouTube video now, and if my former basketball coach would text me now saying like hey you should not film youtube videos you will fail go like find yourself a normal job like i should not really care about that opinion because it's his point of view that has nothing to do with youtube he doesn't film youtube videos by himself he doesn't know that industry he doesn't know what i can achieve and what i want to achieve like it's my journey right now and as i said it's not me being a jerk it's just something that doesn't apply to me anymore and try to keep one thing in your mind People who are better at what you're doing will probably never judge you. Imagine a little girl who just starting her singing career. Taylor Swift will probably never come to this girl and start judging her. Probably exactly opposite gonna happen and rather than laughing at this girl, Taylor Swift will give her the words of encouragement. Another thing that can raise the stress level in your life and lower your self-perception is when people say, if I were you, I would do something differently. And I recently heard a statement that I never thought about before. It came from Dale's Carnegie book, How to Influence and Influence People, absolutely incredible book. And Dale Carnegie basically said that the only true continuation to the phrase, if I were you, would be I would do the same thing. And just think about it. If you were someone else, you would have the same beliefs, same thoughts, same conditions, you would do the exact same thing they are doing. So when someone gives you the advice or tells you that if they were you, they would do that or that, you should kind of treat it a little differently because if they were 100% you, they would do exactly like you are doing that. And it obviously gets hard sometimes to not listen at all to what people have to say about you, especially if it's your close friends or family. And in those cases, you should ask yourself a question. Do I want to become like my mom or like dad? If you want to become like them, then yeah, you should probably listen to them. But if you want to become something bigger or something different, you should probably like listen to this information still, obviously, but filter it and choose your own path and your own journey. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I personally love my mom and my dad extremely much, but I don't necessarily want to become like them. I mean, I want to borrow some of their good qualities and become something even better. And remember, even after people initially judge you, they have so much of their own stuff going on in their lives that they'll just not have enough time to keep up with what you're doing. For example, you can make the first YouTube video and you know, five or 10 of your friends will tell you 
you like how stupid you are, that you should not do it, it's useless, or even your parents can tell you that. But then after you make your second, third video, fourth, fifth, no one gonna keep telling you that because they have their own lives to keep up with and they like don't care that much at the end of the day. I recently watched a documentary, it's called 14 Peaks. You probably guys heard about that, it's about Nims, like that's the name of the guy. And he climbed 14 of the mountains that are above 8,000 meters in seven months. And guess what? Before he actually did it, no one believed him, no one trusted him, no one wanted to invest into his expeditions, and then he just did it. And after that, everyone was happy, everyone was reposting him, and all of that good stuff. So what I'm saying is, it can be hard at the beginning when everyone is judging you, but then after you proceed, after you succeed or not succeed, people either forget or start just accepting the fact that you're actually doing it now. Second thing that drastically helped me to lower down the stress level in my life was thinking about the worst possible outcome. It can sound scary, I get it, especially, you know, if you're mountain biking, you're heading towards the cliff and you're losing control of your bike and you're thinking about the worst possible outcome that you're gonna fall off the cliff and you're gonna, like, you know, that's gonna be the end yeah that's actually scary to think about but in the majority of cases you're not gonna be heading towards the cliff and that's not gonna be the only stress thing in your life like take the math exam at the beginning of the school year when you're in school you're probably so worried about that you know before the exam even starts but just think about the worst possible outcome in the worst case you just fail but you're still gonna have the entire school year to improve your grade so what I'm saying when you actually visualize and think about the worst possible outcome it's not necessarily that scary at all and then when you realize that it's not that scary at all, you kind of become more courageous and you have less stress in your life. And another big concept that kind of coexists with this one is having that internal feeling that it will be okay. I was just watching Gary V video when he was telling that 2 billion people in the world don't have an access to the clean water. Some people like in Ukraine, they're facing the war and there's other like difficult life situations in the world. If you are stressed about your Uber being 5 minutes late or like you know, you not checking the work email, and your boss being angry at that, those are probably not the biggest problems that can happen in life. You probably know the story how in 1983 the Apple kinda got upset with Steve Jobs and two years later in 1985 they decided to fire him. Obviously that sucks and Steve Jobs was probably not the biggest fan of this decision. But the thing is, he already had all this knowledge that he had in his head. So the worst possible outcome would be he would go somewhere else and use his experience there. Which, not surprisingly, he did. He founded a new company called NextDX and acquired an animation studio called Pixar. Apple, meanwhile, was struggling and in 1997 they decided to bring the Steve Jobs back by acquiring one of those companies. However, a quick disclaimer. As I've mentioned at the beginning of the video, not every case is gonna be like Steve Jobs' case or whoever else. You know, there will be people with really hard life situations, like the mother who's raising her kid by herself, who doesn't have enough to like make a living, etc, etc. And those things, you know, her possible, worst possible outcome will be different from yours, and it's not necessarily gonna apply to her. And here is another quick little trick that you can try to, you know, lower your stress level. When you say the phrase, I am stressed, it is a closed statement. It blocks your mind from thinking, it's not asking any questions and basically you are stressed, you made a statement. Instead of saying that, next time try to ask yourself, why am I stressed? This way, you're giving yourself an opportunity to think and now your mind can come up with some ideas as I said, some questions like why am I stressed? Oh well, my Uber is being late. Well, why is my Uber late? Because it's rainy. So probably everyone gonna be late to that conference you're going to and you have not really a lot to worry about. Remember, if you're worried about small little things, in the majority of cases, the worst possible outcome is not that bad at all and you should not worry about those things that much. Last, but definitely not the least thing that can help me to reduce my stress level in life, was a practice of stillness, presence, and inner peace. I grew up never believing in meditation, none of the spiritual or religious things, and there's a huge difference between spiritual and religion. I was never believing in neither, like definitely not spiritual, so I was never believing that until I actually tried it. And obviously it was a long journey and, you know, during the first month, the first couple of weeks, I was not seeing a lot of effects, but I was already ready for that during that time. I knew that it's gonna take some time and, you know, little steps, but gradually I started to see how I'm changing, how my mind is changing, how my stress level and anxiety levels are changing, and I was just amazed how much it helped me. One tip that I'll give you to help you with your meditation journey if you decide to start at one point is to make it more fun. If you just sit down in the middle of the room in the carpet and sit for 10 minutes, it's probably gonna be no fun for you at all. So I would recommend if you're just starting to do like a guided meditation or some background music 
and two apps that help me a lot with that is Medito and Insight Timer. Both of them are free. Medito is like more a little user friendly because it has a little courses for beginners so you can just click that you're a beginner and it will give you like some couple days program that will teach you a little bit about meditation that you kind of walk you in the journey. And Insight Timer is I would say that a little more advanced level. It has different meditation music, peaceful sounds, it has guided meditation as well. It has a little bit more material and now I'm using that but if you're a beginner and you want to start with something I would definitely recommend you Medito at first. Look, 100% is gonna be ups and downs. And it's not like that, you learn about this, you watch this video and you are stress-free. As I said, it's gonna lower your stress level if you start applying those things or like hopefully it will do it. But don't expect like a magical solution will, that will just make you a Tibet monk and make you stress-free completely. Trust the process, focus on one step at a time and be patient with yourself. Rome was not built in a day, right? If you guys like this video and found it useful in any way, it would mean a lot to me if you like it and subscribe to the channel. I post a lot about self-growth, self-productivity, and I hope you'll find something interesting on this channel. So check my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.